Hi guys, Retro Django here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day today. We're gonna take a look at this Amiga 500. Now, this video was not planned, no nothing. I just, I wanted to clean and re refurbish an Amiga 500. And uh, on the cabinet, it says just a normal Amiga 500. I opened it. And to my big surprise, it says, down here Amiga 500 plus and if we look here the B52 Rock Lobster the motherboard says Commodore Amiga 500 plus revision 8A-1 now this is just this is there are different stories why Commodore did something like this this is just Commodore in a nutshell you know guys because <laughs> As you can see the motherboard it is optimized or ready to be used as an Amiga 500 plus motherboard as you can see it's it says the Amiga 500 plus here as you can see here where it says audio filter it you can install here some resistors you can install the water battery here and as you can see, you can install the chip that con controls the real-time clock here. Uh, but all that is not installed here. <laughs> as you can see, everything is empty. So if we take a look at the chips, they say that they have been produced 30th week of 1992. Now, on every Amiga 500 Plus motherboard that I have been working with, all the chips was from 1991. But this one, all the ICs are from 1992. <laughs> In 92, I mean, the Commodore came up with the... In 1990, they, they came up with the Amiga 3000. In 91, they came with Amiga 500 Plus. And in 92, we had the Amiga 600 and late 92, we had, you know, the 4000 and 1200, the AGA line. So, why did we get this one in 92? Some say they just had some spare parts laying around. <laughs> some say people wanted to have an Amiga 500 instead of, instead of the Amiga 500 Plus because of, you know, we had a lot of kickstart issues, <laughs> backwards compatibility and... I remember when the Amiga 600 came, people were angry. We were m missing the, um, the trapdoor expansion here uh, for the sidecar expansions and the 2.0 kickstart was just a mess back then. So maybe there was a demand for these. So there are many different stories. I also believe that Commodore just had some spare parts laying around. Because as you, as you can see here, we have installed 512 kilobytes of RAM here it, and um, we have these banks free and they are ready <laughs> to be upgraded to one megabyte of RAM and the fat Agnes here the version is 8375 now that's so cool to have in your Amiga 500 because this version of Fat Agnes allows you to upgrade the Amiga 500 to actually, you can actually install um, directly on the motherboard 512K more and it will be recognized at, as one megabyte of chip RAM. And other than that, with this Fat Agnes, you, you can actually also do some few jumper mods also on six, revision 6a and all that to uh, switch between having 512 or one megabyte of chip ram with some with some jumper changes here and over there but you can see that on another video i have done it's just pretty simple to, to do but on the plus motherboard you can have one mix of chip ram there and also install another megabyte of chip RAM over here. Now, I have never installed one megabyte of RAM 
on this revision motherboard. I will do that now, if this one works. <laughs> I just opened it, the cabinet, everything is under soap water, it's getting cleaned. Um, this one has not got any power for so many years, so I hope that it works. The cool part is, I mean, it's easy to RAM upgrade. It has got the newest version of the of the chips here of the ICs. I don't know if the Denise is OCS or ECS. We can, if everything works, we can go into um, Sysinfo and check that one out. But this one, as you can see from fabric, it came without the old destroying Vata battery. I mean. It's so great. So you have the Amiga 500's benefits, or yeah, it, it, it's got benefits. The newest Kickstart, the newest ROMs, and all that. But still have the Kickstart 1.3, so you can play the old games. Still 68,000 um, CPU, and having this one without installed any batteries, you today. <laughs> When you open one of these, you don't have no corrosion, no trouble, no dead traces. I mean, uh, with the Amiga 500 Plus, it's actually my favorite Amiga. One of my favorite Amigas. The favorite is the Amiga 1200, but I mean, number two is probably the 500 Plus. I love this one. Um, but they, they, they tend to leak and, and destroy everything over here and the destroyed disk chip, all the legs here, over here, we are getting some battery juice. These have green legs and also over here, they typically get green with all the juice. But um, as you can see, this one is just clean. <laughs> Everything is just crystal clear, shiny. I just hope this board works. And I must say, I haven't had that much trouble with the Amiga 500 boards. Now, my first Amiga was the Amiga 600, and I mean, I love that computer. I didn't, I, I didn't have the Amiga 500. I skipped that. I had Commodore 64 back then. I was really, really young, guys. But today, the Amiga 600. I have had so much trouble with them leaking SMD caps, and oh, I have had with bad sound and oh yeah I have used many many hours on restoring uh, Amiga 600 but the Amiga 500 they're just so reliable the plus version have battery issues but other than that if you got the, the worst problems I have had with the Amiga 500s were the kickstart ROM this one over here when I got the black screen, it was this. When I had the green screen, sometimes I should just take off the fat Agnes and put it in again, and then it worked. Other times with green screen, I should just uh, replace um, uh, the RAM chips here. Again, easy to fix. When I have disk drive problems that, I, that couldn't be fixed or something with the keyboard, then it was just replacing these CIA chips. I mean, I, I haven't had no sound issues, never nothing with Gary, nothing like that, never a burnt CPU, never. So, so easy to repair and when you want to recap these Amiga 500s, 500 plus, nothing is surface mount, it's just so easy to just remove the few caps it has got and replace them. Well, I haven't, on, on my Amiga 600s, it's just a must. It's a must to recap them because they leak. You can't see, but when you take them off, you can see the traces under, they're just destroyed. But on none of my Amiga 500s, the few times I have recapped the Amiga 500s, I felt like I didn't get better picture. I didn't get better sound quality. I, 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 I gained nothing by recapping those few Amiga 500s. So. If this one works, I'm not gonna re recap it. If I have some problems with the sound pitch or something like that, of course, 
that is good it then it's a good idea but on the mega 500 i'm just gonna leave them as they are all my all my mega 2000s i have recapped them i don't know why they're really special for me also but uh, this one if it works yay and i have got the i think it was together with this one i got this ram box here from alpha data and it says 512 kilobyte uh, RAM card for the Mega 500 and one megabyte for the Mega 500 Plus. So if we read down here, it says that it has installed four times 256k. So this one, in theory, in a normal Mega 500, it should be 512, and in, and this one maybe because we have the Plus, we have the newer FedExes. Maybe this one will be recognized as a one megabyte card. Fun to try, fun to see if it works like that. If it doesn't, I have this one. This one works perfect. It's 256K times four, as you can see. And then the card is called, it's from 1993 Mar Marpet Development MP500. B. Yeah, this is how it looks. And it works. I have tried on memory 500 plus. It works all fine. So let's just um, give this board some power. This board with some ICs from 1992. No battery juice. Looks amazing, guys. And let's start with putting this one on if it works and see what's gonna happen. I mean, I hope it works. <laughs> okay, we are ready to give it some power. First test after all those years and let's see what's gonna happen. Come on. Come on. It takes some time because the disk drive is not installed. There we go. Kickstart 1.3. I mean, I haven't done nothing. Usually, I mean, at least you have to pull off the chips and put them in again, but haven't done nothing. And as I said earlier, we got, I got crystal clear picture, guys. It's, I love these Amiga 500s. They're just, they're built like tanks, you know? And yesterday I got this box from Jakob, thank you Jakob, thank you for the candy. <laughs> the other one, my son, <laughs> took them. So I just bought another, um, what's it called? Go to drive from Jakob and let's install that one. And we got a, also bought this one. I mean, I, I, I think I paid six or seven euros for this one and let's see what it contains it's just i don't want to use my time with all that i just want to pay and uh, <laughs> get everything ready so uh, let me install this one and, um, and let's just see what's inside guys all right the gojek is installed and let's give this one some power and see what's gonna happen i just got this one home from jakob i had another one i bought from him that didn't work properly so he um he actually, he just said, just send it back to me and I will give you a new one. Um, and that one was with Flash 1.0. And as I can see, he has give, sent me a new one with something called version Flash for Floppy version 1.2. Thank you, Jakob. <laughs> That's nice. So let's, um, when you install one of these, if you turn the ribbon cable the wrong way, then the display if you have the display, um, it will say that uh, the ribbon cables is reversed. So you can just turn it over. And also this uh, green LED light will just be uh, stayed on. But if you turn the power cable, if you reverse them, then you will <laughs> switch between the five volt and the 12 volt. That will probably fry your gojek drive and maybe also your usb sticks so be very careful when you install one of these that you don't reverse the power cables 
So let's check out this one. This is also from Jakob, and I just hope there is something like sysinfo or workbench or something, you know, that can tell me something about RAM and all that. So um, let's give it a go. So what this one should contain also 1.2. So everything should just be compatible and ready to go. It says auto boot, track zero, and those tracks should be reading now. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Oh no. Come to 10. <laughs> Is this go to graph dead already? Or this Amiga CA chip is burned. I don't know, first time testing. As you can see, this Amiga, it, it, as you can see here, it, I am the first guy that opens it <laughs> since 1992. It also has uh, the mark on the backside, never opened. So I'm the first guy, but uh, well, this is bad guys, this is bad. So maybe it's the Amiga, maybe it's the Gotik drive. Maybe it's the USB I have a, I have one over here. This one works, this is perfect. Let's see, as you can see, it's flashing, yeah? And it says R-Type. R-Type can run with 512, but as you can see, tracks, the drive does not read. Workbench. Damn it. Okay. Okay. Let's take this one and see what's gonna happen. Let's check if it's my Amiga that's dead or the newly arrived go to drive guys so let's give this one yeah some power and see what's gonna happen flash floppy 1.0 so if i take this one from jakob that came today now this is 1.2 i don't know what's gonna happen but let's just plug it in this way I can see if my Amiga is dead or the new Gotik drive. Oh man, it's the new Gotik drive. It's not the USB, it's not my Amiga. Damn. All right, nothing to do guys. Now my USB here, it has got it has got what's that in workbench sysinfo. Yeah, I don't have a keyboard, so I have to turn it on and off <laughs> on the power plug. So let's find sysinfo. And it loads. Yeah. Alright, the good part is this Amiga Revision 8. Let me see over here, guys. Two seconds so I can get a tad better picture. <laughs> can you see what's going on up here? You can see the RAM. All right. Oh, also, actually last year, I bought a lot of Amigas and Commodore 64s and all that. And that guy I bought them from, he just... Uh, <laughs> He sent me an SMS, I mean, this is a year ago. He sent me an SMS, he said, are you interested? He had some boxes and all that, and uh, are you interested? I have these uh, games, I, if you want them, you can have them, or else I will just throw them out. And it's Super Wonder Boy for the Commodore 64. I said to him, don't throw anything out. Um, game over, nice. Mermaid. <laughs> oh, look at this. Ninja Master. Nice. Return of the Space Warrior. 
Nice. Hellfire attack. Lucas Film Games. Oh, before it was called Lucas Arts, it was called Lucas Film. Prestige, Prestige Collection. Got four games from Lucas. Yeah, some Commodore 64 stuff. I am also all in for that. So this Amiga 500, it has got the 512 kilobyte of chip RAM. All right, so uh, as you can see here at, at, at the top, it's just 512 kilobyte. Oh, I'm just so down about that. Go to drive. Yeah, I just got it home, a new, fresh one. I've just been so unlucky with those go check drives, guys. All right, let's try this motherboard with this card. Now, if I install this one in an Amiga 500 Plus motherboard, it shows as one megabyte of RAM expansion. So it shows two megabyte in total. But this, this board, I don't think that it will show as um, a megabyte RAM because over here we have a jumper called it's called JP, JP2 but you're not gonna do nothing because of this video please <laughs> look at something else some other guys videos descriptions and all that I don't want to be uh, responsible for nothing so we can do two jumper changes <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. You can just Google it, guys. So let's install this one and let's see what's going to happen. I think that this board will only show without no mod. I mean, this is just an original condition. I think it will show as 512. But just for the fun of it, because I have not played around with this revision motherboard. So let's just, of course, the power is off. Let's put it in and see what's going to happen. Now. There we go. So let's give it some power and see what it says. So go check should still be on. Yeah, sysinfo. Nice. So let's see what's gonna happen here. I have to move the camera, guys. I'm gonna do the motions really slow. <laughs> yeah, it shows as um, 512 kilobytes of expansion. I don't think it's. This well, this one will do it the same way, guys. I mean, let's look at this card over here. Oh, <laughs> now I'm sure it will show as 512 because if you want one megabyte, I think these over here has to be populated also. And it also said it has some jumper jumper to, to choose between them, the battery over here. I mean, it's nice. It's, as you saw, brand new in box and with a thick manual, that's nice. But this is probably only a 512 kilobytes of RAM expansion. But this one that I have installed, it is a one megabyte. And it shows as one megabyte in an Amiga 500 Plus motherboard. So that means that Commodore made this board just like the normal Amiga 500 boards. Uh, and, and, and it's okay because it was sold as an Amiga 500. So we have sysinfo loaded from the GoCheck drive. And if we take memory over here, as you can see, 512K. Fast, uh, fast memory and 512 chip memory. All right, so this is something new I have learned today. <laughs> so you have to mod these motherboards to have more RAM and the speed would be a standard seven megahertz. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And the last thing I wanted to test was, is this an you know the ECS or OCS but as you can see here 
ECS Agnes 1 Megabike. PAL ECS Denise. So it is not the old OCS, but it's the enhanced ECS chipset that came with this revision 8A.1. <laughs> so that's documented also. That's nice. All right, guys, let's just uh, wrap up this video. Um, nice to look at this and learn about it together with you guys. Um, as you all know, I don't sit down and just Google and read and all that. I love to get hands on with all this beautiful, beautiful hardware. So, um, a bummer about this one, but uh, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> uh, about the about the mods, I actually made one of my first videos. I, I think it was my fourth or fifth video. There, <laughs> I found about the mod you have to do to get more cheap RAM and all that. I mean, uh, much has happened since the last year. <laughs> that's nice, guys. So, what to say? I hope you will jump in my Facebook chat page, Commodore 64-Amiga Retro Django. Come on and join the team. I mean, every week we're getting new members. It's just beautiful. Share my videos, guys. I get a notification every time you share one of my videos. And I just get so happy when you share this passion of mine with your friends. I mean, it, it, it's... It, it, it makes me so happy that's just i mean the best support is of course watching my videos but also sharing them is just yeah it gives this extra kick guys so thank you uh, for watching this one thank you for this journey with me now we have learned something more and if you didn't know about this already so until next time play around with your amigas guys have a nice day Bye.